Welcome to Strength Based Marketing. This is Pat Dewar, and I'm so excited you're here because I get to bring to you a couple of friends of mine that I've known for a number of years that have spoken all over the country, probably international too, we'll find that out. But when I think about Strength Based Marketing and the group that I have on Facebook that is designed and, and it really is all about getting really bright minds together and talk about how do you relaunch your business after COVID-19 lockdown? How does somebody get out of the fear and into the front running of this disease epidemic lockdown? Are you looking for what? Ideas. If you're that kind of person that, that is going, I'm a business owner, I'm, I'm really trying to grow, but dang, for one, I feel overwhelmed. I don't know where to go, what to do, how to pivot properly. My guest today, you're going to love him. Rob and Mary Hamilton, I've known him since uh, speaking around the country, and I, I've seen them develop some amazing things. But the thing that struck me really the hardest when COVID-19 hit was when I heard out their business you got to take off. So Rob, thank and Mary, thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, it's always good. You're, good interview. I love your interviews. You uh, love your interviewing skills. So you're very sweet. I've been looking forward to this. I almost couldn't sleep last night. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. My BS meter just went off. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> you gotta, looking forward to it all day. I'll you gotta right. have fun. <laughs> oh. It's all good. So I want to get right into this. COVID-19. It's locked down a lot of the country. Some places are kind of beginning to emerge out, but it really changed your, your business and your model in a way that, bam. So tell us a little bit about your business and what changed, what pivots you made and how it's affected you and how others could do some of the same steps. Well, let me just start real quick, Pat, with just a couple of things. We, we actually were a bit fortunate um, and let me just back up a little bit to, let's just say, nine months before um, COVID-19 hit. Um, for several years, you know, I'd been a contract trainer. Uh, I had my own training company, that uh, Soul Canyon Training and Development, which started in Austin, Texas. Uh, for about 12, year, 12 years, starting in 2007 for me, I'd been contracting with uh, one of the, the main companies uh, seminar companies and doing, you know, 150 to 180 seminars a year. Mary started doing it. What year? 2009. 2009. And so two things for us that we really took a look at um, in early 2019 was the fact that all of our eggs were in one basket. That's one big lesson um, that we were really super focused. About 80% of our business uh, was working in contract training, both of us on the road, you know, so there's a lot that comes with that. Uh, the other element of that dynamic is we were only making income really uh, when we were primarily training. Um, we did start product development you know, five or six years ago, and that was developing a bit of an, an income stream. But really, our income was kind of all in one place, and it was coming from contract training, and we thought that was a little risky. Uh, it was also burning us out. So strategically, we did a couple of things. Um, I have, you know, I come from the corporate finance world and I've been working with small businesses all my life and I have a passion for that. And there is a training company. Um, well, there's actually a company that does more than training, but we were partnering up with them to provide our training uh, through a broader set of HR services. So we decided to kind of explore that relationship a little bit. Um, the other thing we did is we really expanded um, the products that we were developing. So when we rolled out our Excel training program, um, that started to really take off uh, uh, from our efforts, but also um, in the hands of contract trainers. And then Mary uh, has done a really wonderful job in this particular region, because we're in Southern Oregon, building relationships with other businesses and business owners to try to decrease the concentration of our income coming from just one place. So what resulted from that, and then I want Mary to chime in here, is that I actually uh, put a target out there to stop contract training, being on the road um, in the fall of uh, 2019, 
and to get online and to be working basically in the capacity of a consultant with a local company that provides HR and other related services to businesses throughout Southern Oregon. To then shift my efforts towards product development and getting on all sorts of platforms and supporting other live trainers to try to get our product in their hands, <laughs> while Mary continued with the live training and building relationships with other local clients to try to differentiate, to try to uh, differentiate ourselves in this local market in that way, to be known as uh, the, the go-to people for virtual training and recorded training products to supplement efforts, uh, but also uh, for Mary to focus on some of the skills that she has um, in building uh, local contacts, just to try to give us more differentiation and diversification of our income. So that was fortunate for us. So when COVID-19 hit, um, we were already kind of positioned with a separate income stream, a broader income stream coming from products. So the direct hit as you well know from live training basically going away, wasn't as big for us. And we were there in a position where we could actually support other trainers who were trying to go through the same thing. So there was a bit of fortunate timing, to be quite honest. I wish I could say it was all strategic planning, but we had done some steps to try to get ahead of it for completely different reasons. And it just turned out uh, to be super fortunate for us. And we, we, we really feel lucky from a timing standpoint, but we've been capitalizing on it and trying to help others that are in a similar situation make transitions. So how do you want to supplement that, Mary? Well, part of it was um, in 2008 or 2007, 2008, when the, when the market took a huge dive, we realized at that moment in time, we had all of our eggs in one basket, Pat. We had, I had built our training company. I was doing primarily marketing for our training company and, and Rob was our trainer. And, and so we were doing a, a two person dog and pony show, basically um, uh, our, based on our um, personality workshops. And we went all over the country, all the way to um, Florida um, offering this training. Well, when the market crashed, we realized real estate agents and mortgage brokers were all going away. And that's actually how we got involved with the contract training world. And so we realized early on uh, or later on that we needed to broaden our base. And part of broadening our base was getting involved with our chambers of commerce, getting, um, getting the word out to our local business community that we were your training solution. If we don't train it, we know people who do. We're, con you know, we're networked in with 250 trainers that, um, that can offer trainings that, that we can't necessarily offer. Let us help you solve your training issues. And that was really the, mar the message that we took to market two years ago, um, where we pulled me off the road all but a week a month. So I could keep my feet in, my feet in the training world, but really broadening our local base. And so when, when the COVID um, hit, I was actually in Seattle, Washington doing a training for uh, contract trainers. And when I got home, I realized, oh my gosh, we're not gonna go back out on the road for a long time. So one of the first things that I did was I partnered with the gentleman that I hired to help train the Excel trainings. And him and I rolled out a virtual teamwork uh, seminar, which we launched on our Zoom platform. And it was basically, now that you're going to be home, you've got a whole new team that you're going to have to deal with called family. And how are you going to navigate all this tricky stuff while working from home and trying to be productive? And so um, that was fairly successful. We did a couple of those. And then um, we launched a series of uh, Zoom trainings that were based on our um, Excel Essentials program. And so even though we had to cancel all of our live events, which we had partnered with the company Rob had gone to work with, um, we rolled them out as, as Zoom meetings. And, and that platform, we realized, couldn't go four hours. We really tried to keep it at two, two and a half hours because the attention span just wasn't there. Um, and we recorded those and offered them at a reduced price because we wanted to to support these people that were home. And my message was, don't vegetate, edu educate, right? Nice. Don't vegetate, educate. Huh? So yeah. I, I do have a question. When you guys switched gears, when you guys pivoted with COVID-19, just, I mean, it's like, it sounds like you guys 
re-upped your marketing and things. What were some of the steps you took to reach the communities that you were affecting and you were influencing? Uh, what are what are some of the things you guys did? I'm going to say just you know two things you know, right off the bat was, you know, in a, in a real true, honest spirit of real it realizing how shell shocked a lot of people were, um, we took the prices of everything that we had kind of laid out there from a uh, live training, even webinar and recorded products. And we brought them down like 90%. And we just basically said, look, you know, while you're all back on your heels here, trying to figure out what, what you can do, Mary's don't, don't vegetate, educate. That was beautiful tagline. She put that out over and over and over again. And we've had good attendance um, at the at the webinars we put on in the spirit of really trying to help people uh, because there's been a lot of people impacted income wise who can't work, who have the opportunity to be educated right now. What's the reason that's helped us is if you really people can sniff out phonies, you know, you talk about your BS meter and everything. And if you're if you're just really doing it as a loss leader to manipulate. Um, then I don't think, because people can sniff that out um, pretty much these days. We're sophisticated consumers, right? Uh, but people really feel the energy of you, your willingness to help and lay that out there, um, then, then that pays off. And so it has. It has in a couple of ways. Yeah, certainly the income generated by putting on those events and then the people that follow up with product purchases and stuff like that, that's been good. But quite frankly, when you're discounting at 90%, you don't make a ton of money there. Uh, the other part of it has been a lot of community goodwill. Um, so we also try to drive traffic to our YouTube channel. And that has been increasing um, each month, which has been great because, and those are free, you know, but those guide people, you know, to our products as well. So, and I'm going to say the other thing is that uh, businesses, uh, in terms of helping them pivot, uh, not only with training, but with information on where resources are and how to apply for those resources. And, and just going in with information that we can get our hands on um, through Soul Canyon, but also through BBSI, which is the other company that I work with now. Uh, we've established a nice broad base. And since I work for BBSI in the position of what they call a business partner, business consultant, we have a training piece. And we've been able to, at arm's length, integrate Soul Canyon into providing that support, mm -hmm. which has been seen by the community as support. So, you know, having your heart really in it from the standpoint of helping people that are suffering right now in any way you can has been one of the major areas for us to pivot. Um, and we've, we need it. It's not hard for us to stay pure on that, but make sure that the message is pure. And I just think that, you know, if you're doing that, then the universe is programmed to sustain you, you know, if, if you're really, if, if, if you're doing that in the right spirit. So that's what I've got to say about so, it. Two questions that I would think that a lot of people that are listening are trying to, to work through right now is how do they break through the fear? Whether they want to acknowledge it or not, I think a lot of business owners are there's, there's fear and overwhelm. It's like, where, where do we go and what do we do? And a couple of things that I heard is, hey, make sure you find out what are all the things that you can do to relieve some of the financial stress. And it sounds like you're doing that. And then, you know, getting into action, it's don't vegetate, educate. I love that. It's take a step to raise up your skill set because when you raise up your skill set you raise up your value to the organizations that you serve and and so um going from here leading you know i mean do you have do you have some targets of things that you're you're looking at at doing in the next few months three to five months you know i'll say before the end of 2020 that will be expansions and that people can connect you on. Well, one of the one of the things that having this stay home order did was it allowed um, it allowed us to finish some projects that we had out there. And I just um, completed a, a marketing summit 
that I attended. And one of the messages was finish building your bridges. I mean, a lot of us have projects that we've started and started and, and, and then we're too busy to finish. So um, Rob had uh, the opportunity to finish uh, Word Essentials, which is the, a, a really wonderful partner um, to the Excel Essentials program. So we've got a uh, Word Essentials now out there and, you know, we'll be finishing our PowerPoint Essentials program and, you know, just keep growing, just keep learning yourself. Um, I did a test run with, um, we've always had a coaching program since 2001, Rob developed a, a personal transformation program and we did, we've always offered that on a one-on-one -on -one coaching level. And so, just for giggles and just to see if it would work and to, to be able to offer it at a lower price, I took a group of folks through this and we just completed eight weeks and we did it with Zoom support. We did it with one-on-one -on -one phone calls and I didn't actually get to see these people in person, but I got to know them through, through this and, and the change that has happened in these eight weeks has just been phenomenal. A lot of these folks that went through this were furloughed. Um, so they didn't even know if their jobs were going to be available, you know, coming back. And so we talked about, you know, what does your perfect job look like? What, what are you going to do if you don't get called back? Um, what are you going to do as a business owner to get the right people in? And so it was been really fun. Our next, next uh, session kicks off on the 17th of August. So it's going to be it's going to be really fun to help some folks through the change via Zoom. Now, who's who went through your program with you? What what kind of like what were the qualifications? Were there was it the message specific to a certain group? What did you do? Um, well, the first the the concept came from a group of ladies. A group. Well, I say ladies because they were both they were both females. Um, that actually signed up for the course, but there are, uh, is a group of educators and support people that work for our local community college. And we've done work with our local community college. As a matter of fact, Rob was an adjunct professor for uh, a number of years there. And so they reached out to us saying, you know, hey, we can't afford the full blown package, but is there an option that we could do it as a group? And so um, those folks went through the program and then a number of networking um, um, groups that I belong to, uh, business owners jumped in and said, hey, I really need some help because I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I had a game plan and my game plan kind of just got thrown away, right? So um, it, it was a good, good mix. And uh, the, the age range was from 25 to we won't mention how old, um, but, but a huge wide um, age swing. And so one of the things that group coaching allowed them to do was learn from each other. So, you know, that, that's one major need area um, right now is there's a lot of paradigm shifting going on. A lot of people thinking initially that this was going to be a short-term thing now realizing that there are some long-term implications and there's some things that are never going to be quite the same again. Um, so one thing a lot of people are willing to do once they're kind of shaken up at their foundation at their core and in terms of what defines them is they're willing to, some people are willing to reinvent themselves. So the program that Mary's talking about was the one that was at the foundation of why our name's even Soul Canyon. It has a very specific structure that allows people to go deep down inside themselves, define who they are, and then build themselves back up uh, from the standpoint of a, of, of a, mission and vision and core value defining process and then goals that take you off in a direction there. So Mary's done a great job of conducting that program and basically turning that into a product because it was a coaching process before, um, but now it's becoming a product. And that's one of the things that we see a need for out there. One other thing that Mary mentioned briefly that I think is a huge need right now that we're following up on is this whole idea of doing stuff like what we're doing right now, but doing it effectively. Uh, going beyond the talking head on the screen and using that um, to really be a developmental tool, a communication tool, a business tool, a pitching proposal tool, all that kind of stuff. So um, the mechanics of that, other elements of virtual work, you know, how to stay on task and, and all that kind of stuff is a great program uh, that Mary and Kevin Barrett up in Seattle uh, put together from, uh, and we'll continue to refine that and put that together. So there's some needs that are kind of emerging and, you know, even the whole idea 
of developing products themselves where people could self-guide on training or, you know, self-guide with a coaching assist or a group coaching assist or whatever that model is, was, was just something that, you know, was out there uh, when I developed the first financial training program and then managing stress and mastering change and our colorful mm -hmm. connections program. And then finally, the most popular, wildly popular one, XL Essentials was the last one we developed. It was a matter of just kind of seeing a need, perceiving it, developing the product, and then putting it out there. And, mm -hmm. you know, having your ear um, to, the, to the table. Now, you know what people are struggling with, just to throw an idea out there, people are struggling right now with, okay, hmm, you know, I, we're kind of surviving the situation right now. Uh, but guess what? My kids, uh, that whole thing that happened in the spring, uh, it's going to happen in the fall. So what am I going to do? How am I, my kids going to be instructed? Even if they're set up with their school to do online instruction, uh, do I need online tutoring? Do I need an approach? So there are in here in Southern Oregon, uh, a couple of charter schools and uh, one mm -hmm. particular nonprofit organization who are looking at a very innovative way of doing that from the standpoint of being able to socially distance, educate, experientially um, educate, put on, put some new innovative models together. So all sorts yeah. of- right. I, I think the education there. thing, it's, it's so funny to me, you know, it was my greatest weakness and then it became something that I, I never wanted uh, to allow myself or allow somebody to think that I wasn't smart enough, which is really dumb. But yet it, it was the thing that, that created a lot of success in being able to process information and all that. When, in 2005, when I left corporate, I went, what can I teach? And it was the first thing that just kind of, you know, comes out you and I thought, used it. You, you know, used and so, it. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that uh, it kind of reminds me, hey, you know, maybe there's some, some people that need that kind of acceleration uh, to, you know, double their reading rate and remember more and, and stuff like that. And that's a great thing. And, but, but whatever it is in your world, folks, the other thing I do want to ask about, because I want a little clarification, because I, when I listened to what you were saying, I went, the work that you're doing as a business consultant, I mean, I realize, one, that's probably your highest profit center. Two, what are you doing? It is. It is. Uh, you know, not my first time, my first rodeo, right? So tell probably. me more about what you're bringing to businesses and, and you know, what, what people are calling you about and, and looking for. Yeah, so the foundation of services that we offer um, are you know payroll processing and payroll reporting workers comp and risk and safety consulting hr consulting and compliance and then uh, business consulting and strategy so that's the foundation of how we attract businesses to us is that broad range of products and of course some small businesses are more interested in different pieces than others the interesting thing um, is that when COVID-19 hit and things started shutting down and markets evaporated just like that, what I've been saying for years and one of the uh, core competencies that I bring to the table based on my experiences of working for Ford Motor, Eastman Kodak, and Dell Computer as a finance guy associated with, a, with a, an operating unit is my ability to see things financially from the standpoint of the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. A lot of these small business owners don't have that, but suddenly they needed to understand, wait a second, everything dried up. What levers can I really pull here from the standpoint of working capital management? So there were two things that emerged out of that. I need some bridging working capital resources. And so that was, of course, the basis of the CARES Act. First, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, and then the CARES Act, and then that out of that dropped the uh, PPP, the Payroll Protection Program, and the, emerge, and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. So one of the first big things we did, and we kind of did it hand in hand, is we helped um, small business owners understand how they could plug into those resources, and then 
how to optimally use those resources to sustain themselves as long as they possibly could by managing receivables and payables and inventory and, and keeping the lights on and all that kind of stuff. So doing that now for the last three or four months um, has really built up um, uh, our credibility as a business. And then there's an education piece right. that Soul Canyon plugs into that. And now it's real. Now it's not just talking about, you know, accounting and debits and credits. And so this is real to them because suddenly, you know, they had to do it. So, um, so we pivoted um, inside of BBSI um, away from just kind of our standard consulting acumen and our compliance acumen to getting very tactical and specific in terms of what small businesses need uh, to survive and, and establish a real tactical competitive advantage inside that window, you know? You know, it's so funny, so I'm hearing you say all this, and in the back of my mind, I know what a lot of business owners are asking, oh my gosh, show me the money. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the, hard, the hard part is that, because there was a lot of money that was being given. A ton of money, and you know what, Pat? Um, I believe they extended the PPP application deadline. Again. Again, and I do believe though it's coming up in just a couple of days, but mm -hmm. they're in that second round of CARES Act funding that funded both the PPP program and the EIDL, uh, the, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, there's money still out there. You can go out to the SBA Disaster Loan website and just like, you, uh, like we all did, mm -hmm. fill out that application in about 10 minutes mm -hmm. and get those resources. And certainly you do want to read through the loan docs and there's collateralization issues and things like that you want to pay attention to. But man, if, if you even have the option of having that working capital bridge this situation or create an opportunity for you to pivot yourself mm -hmm. in a new strategic direction, which is another thing that we're doing um, with small businesses. That's, um, that's, that's beautiful. I mean, the thing that, that I love about that and, and why I really wanted to kind of go, I know that you guys have some amazing creativity. But when COVID-19 hit, this part of your business went like that, vertical. And, mm -hmm. and it was because you understood, they're bleeding. <laughs> and, we, we, and, and then the beauty of what you've done, and this is me kind of listening and thinking, ah, is that you said, here's the money. And Here's how you don't go broke. How you don't go out of business in the next six months. That's right. right. What a lot of folks don't realize, Pat, is that there is money that cities and counties have available that they haven't tapped into. That's right. Um, and that's you know through my networking in our local community level, I know that there's funds out there for businesses that if they need it, they need to go grab it. And, and they need to, it, don't look at it as a handout. It's what we're here for is to help each other through this. Well, I think a lot of people are afraid of um, IRS, KGB, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's that, it's the, the, well, do they get their claws in you? And I know with PPP, there are some things, there's probably a couple of hoops you have to jump through and you guys probably walk them through that. And there's a couple others. But at this point, it doesn't look like it's just a big mousetrap. That you never know. You, honestly, to be completely honest, you never know how it's going to develop down the line. But one, the few things, for example, we've heard about the PPP. And let me go back all the way to mid-March, right? So when this thing happened and everything essentially in the live training industry dried up, fortunately, because the timing story we told earlier, you know, I have this other source of income of working with BBSI. And all the cross relationships and everything. But when that dried up um, for about two straight weeks, and Mary knows this because I was doing it here in this very place, we were working virtually, but it was pretty much 24 seven getting on top of all those acts and what they really meant because they weren't easy to understand. You know, they were inventing them. They were writing them so they could pass those acts and get that money in the hands of small businesses, but also, into people's hands and as consumers to keep the thing going. So the, the bottom line and all that is a lot of the stuff rolled out before the administrative rules were even thought of, and they're still thinking of them right now and putting them together. And one of the things we've just heard on the PPP as we're staying up to speed with it is 
lot of the banks are going back and saying the SBA has not even given us a way to apply for forgiveness yet between the banks and the SBA. And we really think there's a high, and they came out with that easy form um, that's much easier than the first ones they came out with. So we're thinking the, the whole spirit of it, the whole direction of it, and I get the big brother thing, and I get not wanting to be in debt thing, but if you give yourself the flexibility and the resources to at least make the decision if you need them um, to do this, uh, my perception of the whole thing is that it's all in the spirit of helping small businesses survive so we don't transition from a recession into a depression. And this is an actual opportunity for folks to have the resources to reinvent themselves personally and their that's business. What I, that's what I agree with you, you know, is that it's that time to reinvent, it's time to pivot and get out of the fear and take some action. I'm big on information with implementation creates right. transformation. That's information it. without implementation is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm just grateful you guys, you know, on here and in my, in my, uh, uh, the uh, strength based marketing group. Uh, it's on Facebook. If you're not in it, you're seeing this on YouTube. Go, you know, if you're a business owner, if you're a professional, you're trying to grow out of this stuff that's going on, then come join us and meet Rob and Mary and all of the other people that, that are being attracted to that because they're, they're brilliant. I mean, I, I love having really, really bright people that I get to talk to and that have cre that created and that are being successful in helping their clients. So folks, thank you so much. Now, how do people get a hold of you, Rob and Mary? How do people get a hold of us, Mary? Um, soulcanyon.com out on the web. Um, we are on Facebook. If you would like some free videos and watch some free videos, it's under Rob Hamilton on YouTube. Um, and you can always shoot us an email at Rob or Mary at soulcanyon.com. And we were going to do something special uh, for your group, uh, Pat. So uh, the code SBM, short for Strength Based Leadership. Or, uh, were we going to say strength based SBM or SBL? What were we, what were we yeah, going to do? Yeah, let's do, I put it in there as strength based leadership. And uh, that's, but it actually is the group is strength based marketing. Okay. Facebook. Just SBM, let's do that. SBM. So the code, if you go out to our website and learn about us and you get interested in our products, anything you want to order, um, if you use the code SBM, that's S as in Sam, B as in boy, M as in monkey. Or strength-based marketing. Or strength-based marketing. As in strength-based marketing. <laughs> of course. Go back to the word. <laughs> or strength-based marketing. <laughs> so, so use that code on checkout. That's going to give you a $40 discount on any of our, uh, any of our materials. And, and so, what I was really pleased with, Rob, is that, one, you guys have created really high-quality stuff. And even at full tilt at retail, it's not that bad. But, not that bad. you know... I think most of your programs are about $167, That's right. $127 with a code. And, uh, but I just, I just encourage you folks, it's just take action. This group, this message, this podcast is, is all about helping business owners and professionals that want to grow and relaunch their business out of this uh, whole time period of COVID-19 and the lockdown. And uh, so thanks for watching today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Rob and Mary. And Absolutely. Pat Dewar, we'll see you all next time. Okay. Thanks so much.